In the previous lesson, we discussed setting up a new project in the Keyword Planner. In this lesson, we'll dive into the data output. We'll cover the two main views, the cluster view, which is also the default, and the all keywords view. The cluster view is the default view. This gives you the big picture. It's a bird's eye view of the entire story behind your keywords. Traditional keyword tools give you quantitative metrics, things like search volume and cost per click. These are important metrics, but they don't tell the full story. For example, a keyword that has high search volume and low competition can look like a great keyword to target. But those metrics don't tell you the intent behind the keyword search. If you try to rank an informational article for this keyword and all the other results on page one are product pages, you probably got the intent wrong. And that means not ranking on page one. Writer's End's Keyword Planner gives you quantitative and qualitative metrics, giving you the complete picture so you can take the right decision. Let's dive in deeper. Above your data, you have three main filters and the ability to add a number of other useful filters on demand. We'll explore each filter in a moment after an overview of the interface. Below the filters from left to right, we have the topic column, where you can see all the topics you could create with your keywords. The cluster column, where you can see all the articles you could create with your keywords. And the cluster data section, where you can see the keywords that relate to each other in each cluster. Let's look at the purpose behind the topic and cluster columns. If you recall, when I clustered my keyword list, I set the clustering level to three. This means each keyword in a cluster is present in at least three SERPs results. That creates a lot of clusters, and presenting all this data on one screen makes for an overwhelming experience. So we organize the data into topics at the highest level and then clusters within each topic. Think of topics as themes or parent topics and clusters as subtopics. Clusters belong to a theme or parent topic based on semantic meaning. Each topic is presented in a card and shows the number of clusters within that topic. You can sort topics based on search volume or alphabetically in ascending or descending order. The cluster column shows all the clusters within a topic. Each cluster is presented in a card and shows the total search volume for the keywords in the cluster. The cluster data section contains insights for the keywords in the cluster and is divided into two separate areas. Reading from the top left, the name of this group is taken from the keyword with the highest search volume in the cluster. Below that, you have key insights, which we'll discuss in a moment. And on the right hand side, you have the total search volume and the average cost per click for all the keywords in the cluster. The bottom section shows data related to each individual keyword. You can click any keyword to expand it and view more insights. And you can click the table icon to add or remove other important metrics and insights. The Keyword Planner shows you the quantitative metrics you expect to see, such as search volume, trends, cost per click, etc. But it goes beyond that. Writer's N is actually one of the first products to offer in-depth qualitative data. It goes beyond the numbers to show you deep insights, such as the search intent behind the keyword and the searcher's position in the buying journey. These insights give you the edge and help you see what type of content best serves each keyword. You have a seriously powerful toolkit at your fingertips, bringing you all the insights you need to create a killer content plan in just a few clicks. Now let's take a closer look at the four keyword inside headings displayed along the top of the data table, alongside the keyword metrics. You can add these headings to the data table by clicking the table icon and checking the ones you want to see displayed. The first insight is the keyword intent, also known as search intent or searcher intent. This is the reason why a user types a particular query into a search engine. In this example, you can see the search intent is informational. There are four types of search or user intent. Navigational intent. Users want to find a specific page. For example, Reddit login. Informational intent. Users want to learn more about something. For example, what is SEO? Commercial intent. Users want to do some research before making a purchase decision. For example, best coffee machine. 
and transactional intent. Users want to complete a specific action, usually a purchase. For example, buy Nike Air Force. The next keyword insight is micro-intent. Micro-intents are subcategories of search or user intents. For example, the informational search intent is a category. Some micro-intents or subcategories of the informational intent include expansional, where users want to delve deeper into a topic, and definition, where users want a basic answer. Let's look at the types of micro-intents you can discover in our keyword insights. Informational, transactional or commercial, navigational. Informational micro-intents include the following type of queries. Entertainment, where people enjoy bite-sized content. Memes and short videos serve this type of search intent. Definition, where people seek a concise answer. Featured snippets serve this type of search intent. Expansional, where people seek in-depth knowledge on a particular topic. Landing and pillar pages serve this type of intent. Enablement, where people seek specific guidance to accomplish a task. How to content serves this type of search intent. Aggregation or overview, where people seek a neutral overview of a topic. Tables and listicles serve this type of search intent. Transactional or commercial micro-intents include the following type of queries. Comparison or orientation, where people are considering purchasing a product or service. Ranked listicles, tests and comparisons make sense for this search intent. Category or selection, where people have a general idea of a solution but are uncertain about the specific product or service they need. Shop category pages and service overview pages are ideal for this search intent. Service or product, where people have a clear idea of what they want and are ready to make an inquiry or place an order. Service detail pages and product detail pages are best to serve this search intent. Brand, brand here represents a micro intent of the classic brand search intent. This is where people want to find out more about a brand. Testimonials and customer reviews are ideal for this search intent. Navigational micro-intents include the following type of queries. Support, where people need information about something they purchased. Instructions and product-related FAQs make sense for this search intent. Location, where people want to find a location with the intent to visit it. Maps make sense for this search intent. Website, where people want to navigate to a specific area of a website. You'll find all these micro-intents explained in more detail in this article. Click it and save it as a reference. The next keyword insight is the buying journey, which displays the searcher's position in the buying journey. In this example, the searchers of these queries are in the awareness stage. The buyer's journey is the process the searcher goes through before making a purchase. We don't usually make sudden decisions to buy something we've never heard of. Instead, we all go through a predictable process of becoming aware, considering options, evaluating, and finally, making a purchase. Let's look at the stages of the buying journey in more detail. Awareness stage. The buyer becomes aware that they have a problem. Consideration stage. The buyer defines their problem and considers options to solve it. Decision stage. The buyer evaluates and decides on the right solution provider. Post-purchase stage. After purchasing the product or service, the customer engages with it, sometimes seeking support from the provider or a user community. They may also receive follow-up contact from a provider trying to build brand loyalty. The next keyword insight is the keyword type. The keyword type enables you to differentiate between branded and non-branded keywords. Branded keywords are specific to a brand or company name, for example, Nike Shoes and Writer Zen Review. Non-branded keywords, on the other hand, are not tied to a specific brand, for example, Running Shoes and SEO Tool. In this example, the column is empty, which means that these keywords are not related to a brand. If and when there are branded keywords, the brand name will appear in this column. Now let's look at cluster insights. These are the labels you see above the data table. 
These insights apply to the cluster, as opposed to keyword insights which apply to individual keywords. They cover intent, buying journey, SERP type, and micro intent. You'll note that there is a new insight here, SERP type. This insight only applies to clusters. It defines what type of content best serves this search intent. SERP type is derived from the top 10 URLs in the SERPs for the keyword. It categorizes keywords as either product keywords or article keywords. Knowing what type of content ranks on page one of Google is crucial. It's a window into what Google thinks the search intent is for a keyword or keyword search. If all the results for a query or search are informational articles, you're going to have a hard time ranking a product page. Your best strategy in this case would be to rank a informational page that funnels traffic through to a product page. And now you have that insight right on your dashboard. Going back to our example, you can see in cluster insights that the SERP type for this cluster is article as opposed to product. And that corresponds with the fact that there are no branded keywords in the keyword insights. Cluster insights also show us that the keyword type is informational and the searcher is at the awareness stage of the buying funnel. In Keyword Insights, we can see that the search intent behind each keyword is informational. And we also see that the micro intent varies across keywords from expansional, where the searcher is looking for a wider range of information, to definition, where the user wants a concise answer. Now let's look at the filters we can apply to our data. The filters are divided into two categories. Filters you can apply at the cluster level and filters you can apply at the keyword level. Note that some of the filters provide the same insight to either the cluster or the keyword. For example, you can filter by CPC at the cluster level or at the keyword level. To apply a filter, click the Add Filter button and select your filter. I'm going to add the Buying Journey filter at the cluster level. To use the filter, click it and select the insights that fit the searcher's intent you want to match. I'll select searchers who are at the awareness stage of the buying journey. I'll click apply to activate the filter. Now I can see the topics and clusters that fit this stage and the keywords along with their insights. Note that the intent is informational and the micro intent is mostly expansional but also includes definition. Note that if we check the brand filter at the cluster level, we can see there are some branded keywords. If we were interested in promoting a new product in this niche, we may want to avoid branded keywords. Now let's say we want to target keywords with a decent search volume. We can use the search volume filter and set the minimum value to whatever fits your situation. Now we have our target keywords ready to go. To clear all the filters, just click the Clear Filters button. In the next chapter, we'll discuss more tips and advice to take full advantage of this powerful filter set to refine your keyword lists to fit any goal. The bottom taskbar gives you the ability to apply actions to all your data. On the bottom left, you can add topics and clusters to lists if you want to organize things your own way and export your data and delete topics or clusters you don't want in your project. And on the right hand side, you have the suggest content brief and create article buttons, which we will discuss in upcoming lessons. That covers the first way to view your data. The second view is the all keyword view. You can switch to this view by clicking the second tab next to the textbook mode toggle. This view shows all imported keyword data ungrouped. It's the same format as the Keyword Data tab in Keyword Explorer. You can view all quantitative data such as trend, volume, and cost per click alongside other key qualitative insights such as intent, micro intent, and buying journey. You can click the columns icon and customize your table columns. And just like in Keyword Explorer, you can click any keyword to access more insights like keyword difficulty, volume trend, and SERP overview. On the top left, you have a group of keyword insight filters you can apply to your keyword list. The show not in any cluster keywords only toggle enables you to see all the keywords that are not in any cluster. Just note that any keywords you delete in the cluster view will show in this view. 
And at the bottom of the screen is the taskbar where you can apply various actions to your entire keyword list. You can add keywords to lists, export your data, cluster your keywords, use the forecast tool to measure potential revenue, and activate WriterZen's golden filter so you can refine your keyword list further. The Create Article button enables you to quickly set up an article and assign tasks to team members. We'll cover this in more detail in the next lesson. There are various ways to combine keyword insights and filters to create customized keyword lists that match your goals. But to get the best outcome, follow a systematic process. Set up a hypothesis, test performance, and refine as necessary. Regardless of the situation, the core principles remain the same. Prioritize keywords based on their value and the effort required to rank them, where the value is highest and the effort is lowest. As content planners, it's important for us to have a group of keyword lists that will form the basis of our articles. Use the keyword insights and filters to optimize your list and prioritize them based on the value and the effort needed to achieve your goals. Let's look at an ideal effort and value criteria we can aim for. Value. Choose keyword groups based on the value they bring. Potential traffic and trend. Where there is high search demand or an upward trend. Fit your objectives. Ask yourself, what is the purpose of the content? To sell something? To build brand awareness? To test demand? And in what phase of the buyer journey are these searches? Having clear answers to those things will guide you when it comes to selecting the right filters and insights to arrive at the best keywords for your target goal. Effort. Choose keyword groups that require less effort to rank. Keyword competitive level should be achievable with your resources and experience. For example, new websites with limited resources and little to no domain authority should look for easy to rank for keywords with low competition and moderate search volume. On the other hand, well-established teams that have more experience and more resources can target more difficult keywords, which are more beneficial in the long term and can help you stay ahead of the competition. To create an effective content plan that aligns with your keywords and your goals, consider two key factors. Ease of execution and alignment with overall content strategy. Ask yourself if targeting a keyword list will be easy to implement and if it fits your content strategy and direction. Now that's a lot to take in, but at the end of the day, remember that there is no right or wrong way to organize and categorize your topics because content is always dynamic. So there's always room for creativity. In this lesson, we've covered the Keyword Planner in detail. This is probably the most complex lesson in our entire course, and it reflects the powerhouse that is the Keyword Planner. As I mentioned earlier, this is one of the very first tools to offer quantitative data at this level. And as you can now appreciate, knowing the search volume and competition of a keyword is simply not enough. Doing SEO that way is very costly and inefficient. The Keyword Insights inside the Keyword Planner puts you several steps ahead of the game. In the next lesson, we'll continue on to the next step, where you'll see how you can use our AI Assistant to kick off the content creation process in seconds. In the meantime, do play around with the Keyword Planner and discover the complete picture behind your keywords.